Welcome to Kaleidoscope with me, Savitri Rodrigo. On Let's Talk today, Triad's Joint Managing Director, Varuni Amunagama Fernando, referees the debate on people versus profit. And designer Andre Estefan wraps up his story of fashion in life in 60. But first, here's your news capsule. Colombo Stock Exchange, the market seems to have stabilized with the indices moving up by 8% this week with average daily turnover being 1.5 billion rupees. Due to COVID-19, government of Sri Lanka's revenue has dropped by more than 120 billion rupees, which is possibly why the government, after dropping the price of 92 petrol last week, moved it back up to 142 rupees per litre this week. Even when parliamentary elections are held in Sri Lanka, it will cost about 14 billion rupees or double what it would have cost prior to COVID-19. With the onset of the monsoon, Sri Lanka also has to contend with the rising incidences of daily, with numbers increasing in 11 districts. And now for an inside view of what it's like inside a quarantine centre. Here's undergrad Ms. Shakir Singha, who returned from the UK and even sat some of her final papers while in quarantine. In my experience, the 14 days went relatively fast because for a lot of uni students, including myself, the month of May is packed with end-of-year exams and assignments that kept us more or less occupied during quarantine. The army officers were in charge of taking care of us for the 14 days and they were really accommodating towards our needs, whether it was bringing us meals three times a day or doing temperature checks twice a day. Nishakya and her roommate gratefully left a thank you note for the army personnel who looked after them. This week, oil prices climbed and WTI is currently around $32 per barrel, up from a low of $22 last week, but still way below the $62 per barrel level it was in January this year. And China is back in business. Oil demand seems to have rebounded to 13 million barrels a day, the same level it was before the lockdown. But as a result, China's air quality has dropped to worse levels than before the pandemic. And in motor vehicle news, the combustion engine may be a thing of the past. Demand for both fossil fuel cars as well as EVs has dropped by 23% and 18%. But COVID-19 will speed up electrification of transportation. Thai films will no longer have love scenes. The Thai film industry has been banned from having any love scenes, fight scenes and even any acts involving close contact. And Sri Lanka's film and teledrama industry has been given the green light to go ahead by the Ministry of Health, provided artists use their own makeup without help from others, crowd scenes are to be avoided, minimum crew and buffets are not to be used, and well ventilated locations and sets are a must. So, how do restaurants social distance? In Bangkok, stuffed pandas are dining companions. In a restaurant in Virginia, there are costumed mannequins. Milan has introduced plexiglass dividers between tables and a Swedish couple opened up a pop-up in a meadow where food comes in a pulley system. But in Sri Lanka, with restaurants remaining closed, gourmet cuisine comes home. The ambience may not be there, but gastronomic dining is only a delivery away. If you look at your fingertip, that was the size of a 99 million year old piece of amber in which the skull of the smallest dinosaur was found. And in sport, Sri Lanka rugby is looking at September to return to training, but with masks, social distancing, and regular hand washing. With the Germany's Bundesliga back in action, maybe Sri Lanka rugby can take a lesson or two on playing a complex sport during a pandemic. And finally, the mayor of Tasmania has asked his citizens to do the silly walk in the city's main street, just to have a bit of fun during these gloomy times. That's the walk that was made famous by Joel Cleese. So that's it for the news capsule this week. We'll be back with Varuni Amunagam Fernando on the debate, People versus Profit on Let's Talk. of job losses and salary cuts, the big question for business is people or profit? The world over, companies are asking for bailouts 
and employees who once had very secure jobs are now teetering on the edge. Sri Lanka too will see unemployment rise faster than we all imagined. So who looks after the people, the very backbone that these companies always boasted about? These are very employees are now facing a very uncertain future. Director of Derana Media Network and Citrus Leisure PLC as well as Joint Managing Director of Triad, Varuni Amungam Fernando, sits with me to discuss just that. So welcome Varuni to Kaleidoscope on this subject of people versus profit. What do you say to those companies that are thinking of cutting jobs and also cutting salaries? Sorry, only one thing. Shame on you. That's all I can say to them. There is one key reason for that. It is because this is not the time to be doing that. And most of these companies have done very well in the past. And if you look back 5 to 10 years, they have made huge profits. So they do have reserves. Whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're part of, say, a multinational organization, you always have your reserves to use in case of an emergency. And the most important factor is None of these companies will be where they are at today if not for the people. None of them have done, the decision makers, the CEOs or the heads of the companies would not have done it alone. And when people join a company, it's a commitment. The owners give them a commitment saying, we are there with you through thick and thin. So when the chips are down, if this is the way you're going to find a solution for them, knowing very well they have nowhere else to go. While I do understand, yes, sometimes when they are in your challenge, you need to re-look at the business, you need to restructure, you need to wean out the dead wood and become lean and mean and very competitive. True, but this is not the time to do that. So what do we do about the shareholders then? There is no business without people. So there is no profit without people. So as long as the shareholders are explained to and brought in as part of the team and they are made to understand that having these people, that's the only way you can continue to ideate, innovate, uh, recraft your service offering. Because at this point in time, with all these challenges, Savi, it is imperative that any offering has to be re-looked at to make it very, very uh, competitive and relevant. So in order to do that, you need the people. You need the right people. So the shareholders have to be made to understand that these people are key in future growth or sustaining the business. I don't think in any case shareholders will be that ruthless. They will say, look, you are the CEO of the company. You take the right decision. CEOs are supposed to allocate funds, right? Whether it is human capital or whether it's financial capital. It's up to the CEO. Ex-Facebook CEO Chamat Palihapitiya said that bailing out big business is not the answer to the job cuts and the salary cuts, that it's investors who get cushioned. What do you say to this? He is 100% right. Because any smart business has to do certain things, do it the right way. But more importantly, what Chamat Palihapitiya says is right and more than anything else, we are, as Sri Lankans are great admirers of this gentleman. One key fact, Savi, is all his achievements are because he's been in the West, done wonders, broken barriers, all of it. But his compassion comes from his Sri Lankan roots. So in this game of people versus profit, who should win? There is only one competitor, people. So it's a one horse race. People, people, people. So there it is. The right thing to do is to do the right thing. Barney Amangama Fernando, thank you very much for joining us on Let's Talk. In Life in 60 coming up next, designer Andre Estefan journeys through history of fashion in 60 seconds. Are you Bowen? Welcome to Sri Lankan Airlines, where service is intuitive and indulgence is encouraged. Our care is inherent. This is where the world comes home. Thank you for flying Sri Lankan Airlines. You're our world. Fashion stories are colourful, they're exciting and they're full of artistry and creativity. 
Each story is unique and for most it's a constantly revealing journey, as designer Andre Estefan reveals in History of Fashion. I started at the age of 18 and then it was all about being radical and doing the crazy shoots and taking the fashion risks or so I thought. I never really cared about what people thought, you know, about what I did. For me, it was all about what I want to show and less about what people wanted to buy. I guess being creative has always been, you know, in my blood and has been at the center of my life. I don't believe that creative can be taught. I believe that you are either creative or you're not. And if you're not creative, I then guess it's a waste of time you're really being in fashion. I hated school, I failed at everything. So when I realized I was good at clothing, I guess that was my absolute chance of making my mark in this particular area. And I guess it's been that ever since. Andre Estefan, thank you very much for joining us in Life in 60 and for revealing his story of fashion. Technology is key in moving forward to transform every challenging moment into a profit where manual becomes digital business becomes smart and lives become smarter. People's Bank Online Corporate Banking. It's truly the change you need. That's it on Kaleidoscope this week. If you would like to send us some feedback, comments, suggestions, or even interesting people you'd like to see, please email us on kaleidoscopeweekly1 at gmail.com. So until next week, stay positive and wash your hands. Now, here's your Kaleidoscope takeaway. Push yourself because no one else is going to do it for you.